In this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about getting a divorce in Thailand. What's up guys, it's Greeny. And in this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about, well, slight little bit about marriage and about the divorce process in Thailand. And there's some things that I wish I knew going into the divorce process that probably would have made things go a little bit smoother. Luckily, it worked out for me, but if you don't pay attention to some of these steps, it may not work out as well for you. So what's new with me? I've been back a few weeks from Malaysia. That was my last trip. Sick as a dog. I think I got something on the airplane and you know, it's just a pain in the ass. Every time I go somewhere, I come home and it's like I'm out of commission for two weeks. So I've been doing nothing. It's like I finally feel better. It's like I've arisen from having a coma. Like I'm just finally like back alive a little bit and it feels pretty good. So like the title says, I'm going to talk about divorce a little bit in this video. And ever since I was divorced back in July in Thailand, I've gotten a lot of questions, you know, on the subject. And there's a few things that I really want to stress uh, just to help you guys out that are contemplating possibly, you know, getting divorced in Thailand or even getting married in Thailand. You know, there's just things that you should do to cover your ass to make sure everything is gonna be smooth. Now, going into a marriage, you're not thinking about divorce. Why would you? You know, everything's happy, you're getting along great, or else you probably wouldn't be getting married. Who even wants to think about the negatives or what could happen to make things end badly? But it happens. I read a statistic not too long ago that 50% of marriages are gonna end in divorce. And if it's your second marriage, 70% are gonna end in divorce. Third marriage, only 10% are gonna make it through. So you gotta be pretty lucky if it's your third marriage to make it through. It's a 90% divorce rate. And I read that somewhere and I can't quote it. I don't know where I read it. And maybe it's just some BS, one of these, you know, these little memes you see on Facebook or the internet or something. But I read that somewhere. So of course, you're never planning for anything to happen bad. But word of advice is before you even get married, you get a prenuptial. And this made things very smooth getting a divorce here in Thailand. So with a prenuptial, you want to spell certain things out like, you know, what are you going to give the person if you get divorced? What are you not going to give the person? Are you going to pay alimony? Will there be no alimony? What is each person bringing into the marriage? Because Thailand, the law is similar to America where if you were to get divorced, it's only 50% of like what you earn, what you made together as a married couple. That, that gets split up, you know, that's the legal way it goes. So say if you had a business in Thailand and you made 100,000 US dollars in Thailand, however many baht that would be, and say maybe you saved 50,000 of it and spent 50,000 over the time you were married, then you would split that 50,000 you had in the savings, 25, 25. But you gotta have it spelled out in the prenuptial what each party's coming into the marriage with. In my specific situation, you know, I owned a condo. I had a certain amount of money in the bank here that, uh, you know, I had to bring over to get the uh, initial retirement visa that I had. So that was all written into the prenuptial. So, you know, there's no questions asked, say if things go badly. And by the way, if you enjoy this type of informational content, please subscribe to my channel. You know, maybe later on I'll make another video about how much the divorce cost me or how much I spent being married or, you know, just all the costs involved. That's not what this specific video is about, but you know, leave me, a, leave me a comment. Do you want me to get into the nitty gritty total money spent, <laughs> if you will? In my specific circumstance, uh, we were together uh, almost a few years and married a little bit over a year and things just didn't work out and we decided to get divorced. Things were going bad for a little bit and I had been out of town for a while and then I got back in town and we tried to see how things would go and things didn't get any better, so we decided to get divorced. Well, divorce here in Thailand, it's kind of like breaking up. <laughs> it's kind of like having a regular relationship, going steady with somebody, but like an official breakup where it's in writing. So what happened is maybe on a Friday, we said, like, hey, this is just not going to work out. On Tuesday, let's go to the Ampur, which is like the city hall, if you will, and 
let's just finalize this. We're going to get divorced. Like I said in the title, a few things that I wish I knew before I went down this road. And it didn't bite me in the ass like it could have if you didn't have a prenuptial. We show up at the Ampour and one thing I knew is that I needed to bring a witness and she needed to bring a witness. That's all I knew that you had to do is you just go there. There's some stock forms that you fill out, you sign and you each bring a witness and, and no big deal. It's all no problem. Well, what I didn't know is you have to bring a Thai witness. I brought up Falang, one of my friends. He didn't count. They said, well, we'll just have so-and-so sign as a witness for you, one of the employees here. No problem. That's all great. Well, they bring you the stock forms, and I look at the forms, and everything's in Thai. I couldn't read a damn thing. And I'm like, fuck, I don't have a Thai witness. Nobody translate this for me except for my ex-wife, soon-to-be ex-wife, who's sitting next to me, and the people are... Like, well, just let her, she can translate it for you. I go, well, hold on a second. I pull out my phone. I go, let me just, uh, I can photograph the page and I can read it. I can try, no, no, you cannot do that. Cannot do that here. I'm like, what do you mean? I can't read what I'm signing? No, 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 cannot do that. Cannot do that. Cannot, cannot, cannot. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? And so, Fi, you know, she's, everything's amicable. She's trying to be helpful reading it. But, you know, I'm not happy with that because I want to know my own way what it says. I want to know specifically what it says. Sometimes when Fi would do a little translation, you know, it wouldn't be a perfect translation. She's not a translator. That's not her job. And we're getting divorced and it's my own stupidity that I didn't bring a Thai person or my attorney, which would have been the best thing. And we'll get into that a little bit. So I thought going into this, everything would be simple. This stock form is for people that don't have kids. There's not a lot of money involved, you know, just a almost like a cookie cutter sheet that they have there that you sign. And it's for like no frills divorces where everything is just kind of cut and dry, which it was in my case, because when I got married, I registered the prenuptial at the Encore. So they had that on file. So everything kind of was cut and dry, maybe just a little bit of argument or not even an argument, but like a possible disagreement over certain things that we had purchased together, you know, that are household goods. I did not prepare a uh, division of assets form before this because there's really no division of assets. Her and I kind of talked and I said, yeah, I'll give you, you know, a couple months rent, give you a couple thousand dollars to get, get yourself started. But we didn't, we didn't put it in writing. Nothing was in writing before we went to that poor. So my advice to you is before you go, you have this division of assets prepared by an attorney. You submit it right there on the divorce date and they put it in the record. Then there's no questions asked. In my case, like I said, very little question asked because the prenuptial was registered. Just some little odds and end bullshit that um, had I brought that piece of paper, then there would have been no questions. And I didn't realize all this till afterwards, so I showed my attorney the forms that we had signed, you know, just the cookie cutter stock forms that you signed for divorce there. And there was a couple things that were up in there, but he said, you know, no big deal because you had the prenuptial. Everything's kind of spelled out. You know, you're giving her some money. There's not going to be really any questions asked. Much better to do it that way. Much better to bring these forms with you and have them there. Much better, really, 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 to have your attorney come with you with the forms already signed by both parties and him be your interpreter and your witness at the proceeding. Then there's no problems. You'll never have to worry about it. Everything will be good. In my case, we just went afterwards, we prepared the document, the division of assets, and we signed it, and everything's good because everything was talked about, it was amicable, but a lot of times these divorces here are not gonna be amicable. Ladies may want a lot more than they're entitled to, and they may think they're entitled to a lot more than they are, or maybe they are entitled to certain things, and you failed to discuss it or get everything worked out beforehand, and then you just go willy-nilly, get the divorce, then then things could go to court. Then it could go to court and you're like, well, I'm already divorced, you know, but now we're in court. Like, what the hell is going to happen here? So that's my advice to you. Take your attorney, get an attorney before you get married, get an attorney after. Um, if you guys have any other questions about going into the marriage, before marriage, prenuptials, or if you're just dating somebody and you're going to live with them, there's a right way and wrong way to go about that too. Because things can stick you in the ass here even if you're together with somebody and not married. And so um, I'll go over that later. If you have any questions about that, you know, just let me know. Drop me a comment. And like I said, that's what I wish I would have known. I wish I would have known a, already have the division of assets done, 
B, bring a bilingual witness that's a Thai citizen and serve those papers at the divorce proceeding, have them put it in the file, and uh, then, then it's over. It's really over. If you don't do that and you didn't have a prenuptial, it can get tricky. It can get messy. Anyways, if you enjoyed this short video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Green out.